fortunate enough to be here in the Panhandle of Texas with Gary Nutt from the Nutt Feed Yard and he's uh, allowed us to come in and talk to him about his treatment protocols and uh, how the experience has been with, with Reservoir Gold and, and our former Finical franchise. So uh, Gary, thanks for having us here. We appreciate it. Uh, in a nutshell, you've been, uh, you get a lot of you background on your own cattle and bring them in the feed yard as I understand it. Uh, uh, where do you see, what determines your treatment program? So what do you base your treatment decisions on? Uh, origin of cattle, number one. Okay. Uh, time of year. Okay. Weather factors. Uh, natural cattle history. Yeah. Uh, and the weight. So um, by all means, the weight of the cattle. All those combined to that risk assessment we always talk about that, you know, we, we use that as predictor and how they're going to how we can expect them to perform or not perform, but where do you where, where do you have most of your treatments occur? You mean you have a bunch of out cattle or backgrounder cattle? We do most of our actual treatments out on the pasture. Okay. We don't we don't precondition any cattle in the yard. Okay. So it's mostly done in the pasture setting. So like my wide practice up in Kansas was like your typical stocker operation. Pretty well. Pretty much is what you're saying. Yeah, we raise our own feeders. Okay. Well then. So when you see a treatment failure, treatment success, or when you're looking at that, what do you uh, what factors do you look at to gauge that how the ambox working for you? Well we'll run uh, repool percentages. Okay. And naturally we'll do our processing regimen and see how many percent of first that we're doing against that treatment. Uh -huh. And Mainly it's, it's how long it is till we have to retreat an animal and how many we retreat. Okay. I mean, pretty simple there. Yeah, and so what, what pushed you to switch from your previous treatment to best for goal? Well, we had been using uh, new floor and, and okay. banamine, so that made it a pretty well natural switch there. Okay. As far as that goes. We use, I've used new floor for years. Uh, and mainly we use new floor as the weather starts cooling down. Okay. You know, that uh, seems like the new floor to me works the best when the weather cools down. It heats them up pretty good in the summer. So we really, you know, when we start getting into the summer months, more, I would say June, July, August, somewhat September, we don't use as much of the new floor do you think or there, rest floor. Do you think there's less of a challenge during that time than in the, in the fall? And then you know, ahead. there's there's no year the same. Yeah. And so you know, writing a you know a book for that you do this every <laughs> certain month. <laughs> I would like to read it, not write it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it seems like you know naturally, I think we all agree that our biggest challenge is in the fall. Yeah. When all the numbers hit and all the chaos hits and with the change in the seasons and that kind of stuff. And I've seen summers that were very easy and summers that were very, very tough. Yeah. So, you know, I, I don't know. And, and if we get into a situation in the summer and we're, and we've backed off a rest floor and then we're, you know, our other drugs are not responding naturally, we're gonna try it. Uh -huh. uh, and vice versa, if we're using, you know, rest floor in the fall and, and don't seem like we're getting along as well. Uh, I mean, you know, ideally we'd like to have, we'd like to doctor and we use the rest floor in the first, first position and I would like it to cover, you know, 80% of the cattle and only have maybe 20 fall out. Yeah. Is a, is a decent rule of thumb, but. Is that, is that a target you can hit, you've been hitting this year with it or has it been? This year was terrible. All the way around? Uh, the fall was not good for us. Yeah. You know, I mean, we stay abnormally warm and we, uh. I don't know, just, you know, it just seemed like we did not get res good response on a lot of stuff. Now, the year before, we got along for deletion. Yeah. So, you know, but I think we stayed so warm. We did not get a good freeze, what I would say a killing freeze, until way up into November. Yeah. And, you know, we just got a lot, you know, and I think a lot of that has to do with a really hard, hard freeze. Getting that temperature knocked down and stayed constantly low. Well, yes, that and and uh, that helps, and also uh, 
just to get that bottom temperature long enough to go down and stay long enough for a couple of days mm -hmm. that, it that it cleanses the air, so to speak. Yeah. You know. Well, it's but, a lot different than today when it's 30 when we start out and 85 when we get here. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I mean, you know, a week ago we were zero. Yeah. So, and it seems like come January, all of a sudden the cattle straightened out. I mean, now we're getting along great guns. And we really hadn't, we hadn't changed our protocol. Okay. And I, actually, we're fixing to start backing off and trying to save some money. Yeah. Which we're leery of with the cost of these cattle. Yeah. So yeah. we'll move cautiously in that direction. Now, you mentioned new form banamine before. Are you using banamine with any, any first treatment? Or what's your feeling on, were you a strong user of banamine before? And just combining the products <clears throat> made it easier to use? Or? We really used to use banamine just on cattle that, like say if we were using new floor, we would use banamine on the cattle that we felt we had a little more respiratory problem. Okay. That we were behind on a little bit, you know, that looked like more of a challenge. Yeah. If we thought it was a really good early pull, no signs of, you know, just a light sickness, we didn't use banamine. Okay. But now uh, we've just gone ahead and just put it in the mix because you know, with the labor situation, you're not gonna. Yeah. You kind of gotta just write a program and go with it. Yeah. You know. Well, good. Is there anything uh, downside of using Resfor that you had problems with in the winter? Or? Um. I'd say the other day when I was out helping the guys, and it was uh, ten degrees. It's very thick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've heard that. Well, well, good. If there's any anything you could tell the audience about um, about Resfor or your experience with it since it came out a little over a year ago, uh, what would you want them to know? I think it's, it's worked pretty pretty good for us. Um, you know, I, I I think as the industry goes, naturally, I wish we had some other variation of another drug coming out here pretty soon because. You, know, you get these drugs that come out and, and seem like they work really good for a few years. Yeah. And, and then, you know, it's just the evolution of the beast. But I think it's probably, well, it is our number one, you know, what, what we call our number one hole, so as far as doctor goes. Yeah. And, you know, after that, well, I won't go into it, but I mean, we try some other ones. and and. I think it works the best, no doubt. I will say that. Okay. Great. Well, Gary, we appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today and, and get a chance to talk to you about your operation and, and use the rest for gold. And, and thank you again for allowing us to show up. <laughs> You're welcome. You bet.